If you are interested in AI and you haven't heard of Bolt.new at this point, I hate to break it to you, but you are probably living under a rock. Bolt.new is a really powerful and open source LLM web development platform where you can create and deploy full stack applications right in the browser with the help of AI. And it is a game changer, significantly better than just using Claude or V0 or other similar tools. And in my experience, the amount that Bolt.new speeds up my full stack development is truly unmatched. And don't get me wrong, it is far from perfect. I'm not gonna try to say that you don't have to be good at coding anymore to make something that is truly production ready but it is a fantastic coding assistant that will get you started with anything that you want to make. However, there are two big problems that I have with Bolt.new. First of all, you have a limited usage of the platform just like you would with something like Claude or V0. It is the worst when you're in the middle of coding an app with AI and you're forced to just stop. Second, with Bolt.new, you don't get to pick the LLM that you use. It is always Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And don't get me wrong, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is a fantastic LLM. But what if I wanna use GPT? Or what if I wanna use a local LLM that is fine tuned for coding, so I pay literally nothing? You can see that it is not always ideal to use the exact same model every time, no matter how good that model is. I have great news though, because I have fixed both of these problems by forking Bolt.new, running it locally on my computer, and extending the platform so I'm not just limited to one LLM anymore. And I am super excited about what I've been able to do with this already. So allow me to show you what I did and show you how you can do exactly the same thing. Okay, so before I show you what I built and unveil it to you, I want to show you Bolt.new very, very briefly and then talk about how, because it's open source, I'm able to fork it and change it myself. So here we are in the website Bolt.new and you just prompt the AI with whatever you want to build or you can select one of these um, pre-selected options right here. So I can just select one of these and it's going to go ahead and give me all of the chat output on the left side and then on the right side, it's going to give me the entire full stack project all the code and I can preview it as well once it is done writing everything. So this is the standard UI for Bolt and how you're able to build full stack apps really, really easily and any kind of things that you need to correct, um, you just do that on the left side here, just kind of like you would in a chat widget with something like Claude or V0. So it is a very beautiful platform, easy to use, really powerful, and it is also open source. So going to the GitHub right here, you can download all of the code for Bolt.new and run it on your own computer. And that's what I'm gonna do here. But on top of that, what makes it even better is you can extend this application because you have access to all the source code. And so there's a really nice readme here for you to check out in this GitHub repo. I'll link this in the description so you can check this out. And then also they have a page if you click right here on how to clone this yourself and run it on your computer. So these are the instructions that I followed. And I'm going to have something similar in my own repo for my forked version of Bolt that I will also have linked in the description of this video. So everything that I am about to unveil to you here, I have available for you in my GitHub to download so that you can overcome the problems that I talked about at the start of this video. All right, so let's take a look at what Bolt.new actually looks like when you download it yourself and run it. So when you pull the Git repo, follow all the instructions to run Bolt.new yourself, you're gonna have a UI that looks like this. It's a little bit different than what we see on the actual Bolt.new website because they've touched up some things to make their UI look better, but you're gonna have the exact same functionality here. So take a look at this, ingrain this in your brain because this is the default open source version of Bolt.new. Now I'm gonna go over to the version that I've built right now. All right, you see the difference there? Let me go back. And then now I'm gonna go back to my version. There is one simple difference but it makes all the world of a difference for how robust this application is. And if you didn't catch it, it's the fact that we have this drop down here where we can select the large language model that we want to use to work with Bolt.new. A bunch of different models here from Anthropic, OpenAI, Grok, and I have integrations with Olama for a bunch of different models that are specifically for coding, like Quen 2.5 Coder, DeepSeek Coder, Find Code Llama, Regular Code Llama, so many different models. Literally any local model that you can run with Olama, you can have in this platform now. And when I go over my code changes for this, I'll show you how you can do that as well. And it is just so, so awesome. So if I don't want to use the default Claude 3.5 Sonnet, I can select GPT 4.0 and I can, you know, just select one of these pre-built options here to build an app for me. And so, yeah, like you can see right here, it looks pretty much exactly the same as the actual Bolt.new website. 
but this is indeed running a local host, so it is on my computer. And so it's entirely private to me, obviously besides sending my data to GPT right now, but I can switch that to a local model and I'll show that in a little bit as well. And so yeah, it's all really nice and fast and working perfectly. We built this to-do uh, app really, really easily. So I'll say test and test two. All right, looking good, nice. Yeah, so it gives me the preview. We have all the code here, and this is looking really, really nice. And another really neat feature within this that I built is that I can change my model at any point. And so in the very next message, I can say, oh, I actually wanna use Quen 2.5 Coder 7B as well. And as long as I have Olama running with this model already installed, I can go ahead and use Quen 2.5 Coder B. One thing I will say is that the weaker models that are, you know, smaller, like 7 billion parameters, they don't seem to always work the best with the web container. Sometimes when you tell it to start a project, it won't even spin up the web container. Um, so sometimes you will encounter weird things like that where it does make sense to just use the larger models, but you can still get some really, really good results with the tiny and mighty models like Quen 2.5 Code or 7B. So I can even like, kind of just have like a follow up here and say, uh, make this to do app with just HTML, CSS, um, and JS. And so I'm going to use this model running right now on my computer. It's only 7 billion parameters compared to the, you know, hundreds of times more for a GPT 4.0. And uh, yeah, I've got my fans whirring, so it's going ahead and it's uh, yeah making this app. So sometimes it'll operate well within the web container, sometimes it won't, but it is still really, really cool. Yeah, it looks like it is. So yeah, creating the index.html and it'll go through and create each one of these files here and then hopefully we'll be able to see it in the preview. All right, here we go. It took a little bit because I am running this model locally, but it created the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files and put them in my web container here. Now, the preview looks a little bit jank, so you can definitely tell that this is a 7 billion parameter model that's doing everything here because the prompts behind the scenes for Bolt.new are actually massive, which is why some of these smaller models can't handle it as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, it, it doesn't really work, but what I can do is I can take the HTML, I'll copy this, I'll go into this JS fiddle that I have here, uh, and then I will take my script, my JavaScript, and then I will take my styles as well, and we'll see if this works within a JS fiddle. And boom, it does, all right. So I got a task here, and I can mark it as complete. So this is actually even better than what GPT made in the web container, which is super cool. Yeah, look at this, all right, like, it's a little unfortunate that the smaller model doesn't work as well within the web container, Bolt.new, but it is just amazing that I'm able to use a model locally to build this kind of thing that's actually working really well. So this is so, so awesome. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, I could literally switch to another model for the next chat here. So I have a bunch from GPT, a bunch of options from Anthropic. We have a bunch of Grok models here if you wanted to use like Llama 3.1 or 3.2. And then all of these Olama models that are local for coding specifically. Um, and there are some really, really powerful ones here, like Deep Sea Coder 236B. If you have a machine that can actually run this, you could probably get better results with this model than using Claude 3.5 Sonnet with the base bolt.new. And not even to mention that you can fine tune these models as well. There's just so many possibilities that open up when you aren't limited to using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And that's why I'm so stoked about having all this available to me in this local forked version of bolt.new. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's pretty much all that I want to showcase here. Now I also want to really quickly show you how I actually made this possible and how you can run this yourself. Because all of this code in my forked version is in a link to the description of my video. And so you can very easily just download this and run it yourself. And if you're using a local model with Olama, you're going to pay for nothing, have unlimited credits, and have a lot of power right on your computer. So here we are in my Visual Studio code with my forked repo up. And when you visit the link in the description of this video to my version of bolt.new, you'll have the readme right here, which is going to have all the instructions for you to download this and run it yourself. And so let me scroll down to that section right here. I have the prerequisites listed, just like the bolt.new readme has listed. And then these instructions, I'll have to update a little bit once I actually have this repo published, but you'll clone the URL that's custom to my forked version and then you'll install all the packages, and then you will open your env example file and set each of your environment variables here for your different API keys. 
Now note that you only have to set these API keys if you want to use these models specifically. So if you're only looking to use GPT or Grok, you could just set those keys. Um, so there's some flexibility there as well. And then for Olama, since it's gonna be running locally on your computer, you don't have to set any API key there, obviously, because you're gonna just directly connect to Olama running on your local host. Um, and so that's all you have to do. And then pretty much you just run the pnpm run dev command and you'll have your version of bolt.new with all the LLMs available to you running on your computer just like that. The last thing that I will say here is that you're going to need the Google Chrome Canary browser to run this, uh, which isn't really a big deal. It's a very easy to install browser just like Chrome is and it's a good web development browser to have anyway. And so you'll have that up and running. You set all your environment variables here, you'll be good to go. You're going to have the exact same UI that I just showed you, where you're able to select your model and then interact with Bolt to create your full stack applications. Now, I also want to spend some time and quickly show you how I was able to change Bolt.new in this way. I think it's a really cool lesson for you to see how you can change applications when you fork them. And also, it's nice to know how you could extend this to use other models or even entirely different providers if you want to use a different service for your LLMs. And so let's go ahead and dive right into that. And so first of all, this structure of this repo right here, it's a very standard front end structure. So if you are familiar with front end application development with like Next.js or Vue, React, whatever it might be, this should look pretty standard to you. The first file that I want to call out is this constants file that is in the utils folder, because this is where I have defined the default model, which I'm keeping to the exact same as the regular bolt.new model, quad 3.5 Sonnet. Default provider is obviously Anthropic. And then I have this big list of models here. And this is where I define everything that is available in that dropdown that I showed you earlier for all the models that we can use to generate our full stack apps. And so each one of the items in this list is just an object where we have the name of the model. That's the actual model ID that the respective uh, API needs to know what model you're referring to. And then we have the label, what we display in the dropdown and then the provider. And this is important because that determines which API key the backend will actually fetch to invoke a request to this LLM. So it is so, so easy to add new models to this setup here. Because if there's a new model from Olama, for example, that I want to add, I just copy one of the records already here, I specify the, the new model ID from Olama and then I give it a new label. And that is everything I have to do to add a new model. Obviously for Olama, you need to install Olama and pull the new model, but that is also very easy to do. You just go to olama.com, click on download, and then they have their repository of models here in their library where you can search for any model that you'd want to download. And then they have the command for you to run in your terminal to pull that model as well. So once you've run this, have it on your computer, it is instantly available for you to now use in this forked version of bolt.new. Really, really nice. One thing I will say though, for a lot of these smaller models, some of them just don't work very well with bolt.new. So a lot of this is experimental. I haven't tested every single one of these models with bolt.new. Um, but just know that like because of context limitations and weaker models not being able to handle as much context sometimes, you do have to play around with this a little bit to see which models work the best for you. But a lot of these Olama local models that are fine tuned for coding are very, very powerful. And there's all these options from like Grok, Anthropic and OpenAI as well. And then if you want to add a whole new provider, like something like Fireworks or Together AI, I'll show how to do that in a little bit as well. That is everything for the models and how you can extend that. I spent a little bit of extra time on that just because this is probably the most important part of something that you would actually be the most likely to change once you pull everything that I have for you here. Okay, so moving on, the rest of this is going to be a little bit more technical and I'm just going over this very quickly in case you are curious under the hood how I made all of this happen. And so there's a few different components that I had to modify here and some things in the back end. And so I'll go through these each one at a time. And I'm not going to explain everything in a lot of detail, but there's a lot of work that I put in behind the scenes to make this work. So I'm just going to show it at a very high level. So first of all, in the main chat component that we have in the front end here, there was no concept of a model in the front end at all because it was all hard coded in the back end before. So I had to add a new state that represents a model. And this is what is updated when you select a new model in the dropdown. And then to actually pass this model into the back end, it's not as easy as adding a new parameter to the API call that streams the response from the LLM because it is using the use chat hook from the AI SDK from Vercel. And it's not super easy to customize that to add a new parameter. So what I actually had to do, this took a lot of work to figure this out. I had to add the model 
into the content of the message from the user itself. And then obviously I remove that when I give it to the LLM and display it in the front end. I'll show that in a little bit as well. Um, but I use this to give it to the API so it can extract the model and know which API key to get and which model to set up. And you can see here that um, bolt.new actually did something similar for specifically having file modifications passed to the back end. So it's something that they did, and I did something just kind of similar to that for the model itself. And then in the base chat component, um, this is where I loop over the model list and create this drop down here with all the options that we see right above our chat widget. And then in the user message component, this is where I replace based on regex the model with an empty string to remove that so that we don't actually see the model in the user messages in the front end. So that is everything for the front end. Now we have our API endpoint, which we hit whenever we want to get a response from the LLM. I didn't really have to change anything here. I'm just showing that this is kind of the whole entry point to the back end because of what it does at kind of the bottom here is it calls this stream text function. This is what does most of the work to actually get the response from the large language model. And that is this function in the stream text.ts file right here. And so right when we get into this function, this is where I loop over the messages and I extract the latest model that was specified from the user in the dropdown. So I extract the model. This is also how we can change the model in the middle of a conversation. And I also sanitize these messages so that the model for every user message is obviously not going to be included in the prompt to the large language model because that would just kind of confuse the LLM if the user is giving a model ID for every one of their messages. And so that's how we do that. Now there's just a couple of other things to cover right here. First of all, when we get the model, the model that we retrieve is going to be based on the provider and also the model ID. So this get model function is right here. And first of all, what we need to do is we need to get the API key based on our environment and the provider. And so that is done in this API key TypeScript file right here. And it's just a simple switch statement. So based on the provider, if it's Anthropic, we get the Anthropic API key, OpenAI, the OpenAI API key, Grok goes to Grok, and then the default would be nothing. So if we're using like Olama, for example, we don't need an API key, so we just return an empty string. So that is how we get the API key based on the provider. And then we have separate functions here to actually get the model instance based on the provider as well. So another switch statement based on the provider, we pass in the API key and the specific model, and then we have a function here that is going to use a different provider from each of, this is all from the Vercel AI SDK. And so each one of these functions is going to work with a specific provider to get any model that you can get based on a model ID with that provider specifically. And so if you want to extend this platform to use another provider like Together AI or Fireworks, whatever it is, you can do that very easily as long as that provider is a package that you can install from the Vercel AI SDK. So I'll go back to my browser and show you that really quickly here. There's some nice documentation that I have up here to show you within the AI SDK docs that talks about the different providers that are supported in the Vercel AI SDK. So all these ones are supported. And then it also says you can use the OpenAI provider by uh, changing the API key like I did for Grok to use Grok Perplexity or Fireworks. And there are also open source providers that are created for Olama, for example. And that's actually what I use. So these are all of the providers that are available to you. And if you want to add one of these, you just add a new function. You'd have to add a new API key in the environment variable file and add a new place to this switch statement as well as this switch statement. So it's a little bit more technical here. It's obviously a lot easier to add models to this whole setup for existing providers, but I want to get technical here for those of you who care about that. And so that, that's why I did that here, but that is really everything that I had to change. So a good amount of stuff on both the back end and the front end took me a good amount of time. So I really hope that you can find a lot of value in this and use it to create some really awesome things for full stack apps running locally on your computer. I hope that I've truly built something that you'll actually want to use to boost your productivity while coding with LLMs, all the while paying literally nothing if you use local LLMs and getting to use any model that you could possibly dream of. Let me know in the comments which local LLMs you want me to test out with Bolt.new because I'm definitely going to create some follow-up content around that in the near future. If you appreciated this content, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.